So this is an uncharacteristic video for me. There are two things I tend to avoid on this channel, current fighting game discourse and hypothesis on how we could fix a mechanic, both of which I'm doing today, meaning I'm going to have to do a little bit of justifying. Although the discourse can be interesting, it often boils down to a lot of people saying when it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it's bad, which was absolutely the case for the overly discussed topic of comeback mechanics. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this statement. You can't be wrong if you don't say anything. Comeback mechanics are simply just a mechanic, one that can be used as much for false hype as it can be for balancing. My whole issue with trying to quote, fix old mechanics is that it's often more interesting to look at how they successfully impact the meta and why. The domino effect of patching a universal mechanic can completely shift a meta and make it really hard to address every single eventuality. With all of that in mind, why am I talking about Street Fighter Cross Tekken's comeback mechanic Pandora? Well, because it doesn't work as a comeback mechanic or really anything. You just don't see it getting used, and now with hindsight and a fleshed out meta to boot, we can theorize on what a useful comeback mechanic in this game would look like. On top of that, due to its lack of presence in your average match, you're technically not nerfing anyone by improving it. Sure, some characters will benefit more than others from its inclusion, but I'm nearly always of the opinion that it's better to buff everyone than nerf everyone. We're going to get into the details of why it doesn't work, but first let's actually define a comeback mechanic, because it's not as easy as you might think. Our interpretation has changed over time. There was a point where simply a super meter was regarded as a comeback mechanic in games like Super Turbo because you gained meter for being hit and supers often did half health, so people made comebacks with them pretty often. Nowadays however, the definition is a little more narrow. We associate it with mechanics or resources where the primary means of getting access to them is via being hit. If we take V-Trigger or Ultra Meter as an example, sure we have ways of building those outside of being hit, but even if you don't actually utilize those methods, you'll still have access to them just from being hit alone. This is unlike Super Meter, where the opposite is true. There are some examples that are even less vague than that. Take Rage in Tekken 7, which increases your base damage, gives you access to Rage Art, and Rage Drive for huge burst damage. Then there's Limit Break in Dragon Ball Fighters, which once again increases your damage, this time by a huge 20%. You only get access to these tools because of being hit and being low on life. There's no grey area. It's entirely a comeback mechanic. If you beat your opponent down while you're at full health, no matter what you do in the match, you will not see them in play. You can find a lot of good analysis about these mechanics I've listed and why they exist for balance reasons, but it's been done to death, so let's move on to the far more relevant topic of a game from nearly 10 years ago, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Pandora is a pure comeback mechanic. The conditions for using it are having your active character below 25% and then pressing down down, medium punch and medium kick. When done, your active character will die, leaving your secondary character with the health lost. So for example, if I Pandora with Relento who has 50 health left, into a Chun-Li who has 200 health, now Chun-Li has 250. On top of this, you gain a 30% damage increase and a full super meter. Sounds pretty damn good, right? Well, it's not. For one primary reason, it has a timer. This timer lasts 10 seconds, and once it hits bottom, you lose the round. To give an example of how short this timer is, here's me doing a grab, followed by a super, and you can see I die before they even stand up. I've run out of time. So basically you have one or two chances to land a combo and if you don't, it's GG. In another game, this might be fine, but in Cross Tekken stages are absolutely huge. So realistically, if you activate it in neutral and your opponent is around mid screen, you're probably not getting a hit. They can just walk away and as you try and rush in, they can catch you with a button and extend it to net them a free win. It also means the opponent has to have low enough remaining health that one or two combos would even kill. On top of all of that, some characters actually just net more damage by doing a normal tag combo rather than a solo character combo in Pandora. That's not always the case, but for some characters, especially Street Fighter ones, it can be. Is Pandora absolutely useless? No, it's just very, very situational. 
One of the most common uses is as a combo ender. Because you get full super meter, it occasionally means that after a long combo, if you end with something like a ground bounce or a wall bounce, an optimal combo route can be going straight into Pandora and supering. The problem is that Pandora doesn't reset damage scaling, meaning the extra damage will be minimal, and if that doesn't kill the opponent, the round is probably over for you due to the timer. Another use is as a reaction. Let's say you're playing a Zangief and your second character is Chun-Li. If the opponent throws a projectile at you, you can activate Pandora and punish with her super. This is not just versus fireballs either. A jump in could be punished by a Pandora activation, which might be absolutely key if your primary character does not have a solid Antia and your secondary does. None of these uses are bad, they're just so situational due to the 10 second time limit, making the risk on it the entire round. I will say, however, I don't find anything inherently wrong with comeback mechanics being intensely situational. To me, it's actually a good thing. A big issue with a lot of comeback mechanics is their frequency of use. In Marvel vs Capcom 3, X Factor's purpose was to help balance out how screwed you are when your team dies. Although this is unnecessary to some, it's an understandable goal from the developers. What we got instead was Virgil comebacks non-stop. It might have been fun to watch for the first hundred times, but at a certain point it got so common that it felt like the match didn't start until he was on screen and in X Factor. The thing is, what characters need to make a comeback in Cross Tekken isn't more damage. If you've got the right team, you probably have that in spades. What you need is time. Now, it's really hard to have a good faith discussion about timeouts in Cross Tekken because it nearly always draws out incredibly strong opinions, but let's try and do it with the understanding that personally, I really love this game and no amount of timeouts over the years has changed that. When this game was released, in tournament matches, we were seeing an insane amount of timeouts and that's why this game got a bad reputation. There are a couple of reasons for this, Firstly, light attacks in the original game were substantially stronger for frame trapping, so we saw combos start with jabs and that scaled combos horribly. Damage scaling in general in this game is very harsh and it meant that combos weren't doing enough damage whatsoever. This changed in the 2012 update because not only did light attacks get weaker, but players got better. Over time, people learned how to optimize and quickly realized that some characters were doing near half health from a solid, well-confirmed hit. What helped people die quicker as well was this update included a nerf to recoverable life. In Cross Tekken, when you take a hit, you will take damage, but a portion of that will be recoverable. If you swap the character out who's got this red damage, it will slowly come back. The 2012 update reduced the speed of this by two thirds and made throws also take away this red life, which made a huge difference to the frequency of timeouts. When people talk about timeouts in Cross Tekken, they're often referring to a version of the game that doesn't exist anymore. The game evolved, and this is due to the developers and the players. That all being said, they do still happen. Not insanely often, but they happen enough. They happen still in major part due to the size of the stage. As I mentioned before, it just takes a long time to corner an opponent without a hit, and if the clock is ticking down, even if you do get a hit, doing a combo to carry them to the corner or kill them might take too long. This is a quote issue that Pandora could directly address. If instead of being a comeback mechanic against an opponent, it was a comeback mechanic against the clock, it would be far more exciting and far more useful. What I would do as the hugely underqualified video guy that I am is remove the damage buffs from Pandora, remove the meat again, remove the cooldown, and simply have it that when you activate, your primary character dies, your secondary comes in, and the round timer is stopped. So on the very surface, this is enough. Losing your secondary character was already a huge deal in Pandora, and like I said before, Often combos using both characters did more damage, and on top of this, you lose a lot of utility. Not being able to tag cancel moves to either get an extended combo or added safety is tough. Without the damage boost, pulling off a comeback is going to be very difficult. Now the big issue with doing all of these changes is how frequently you would see Pandora activations in a situation where the time is ticking down and you can't physically kill. 
why wouldn't you activate it? And although it might not lead to a victory every time it pops up, there would be no decision making involved. You just throw it out because it's the only option. I would make its activation condition be on hit rather than in neutral. So you would have to score some kind of successful attack to trigger Pandora mode, making it so runaway and timeouts are still part of the game because they should be. But also it will drastically reduce the amount of no win situations which is what comeback mechanics are trying to avoid. So what's the point of discussing any of this? The game hasn't been patched since 2012 and probably isn't getting an update anytime soon. Well, my big issue with comeback mechanics is the fact that more often than not, they simply give you damage. There's not a complex idea behind it. You either get a damage boost or access to an attack that gives you a damage boost. What I'm trying to show with this hypothetical change to Pandora is the idea that comeback mechanics can address issues for the losing player that aren't simply, I need to kill the opponent. There are actual examples of this too. V-Reversal is a counter in Street Fighter V that, although it's not 100% foolproof, can stop opponents in their tracks, which is incredibly important in a game where aggression is the meta. One that Mr. Peck brought up in response to a tweet I made on this subject was Smash's stocks and the invulnerability you gain after losing one. This allows the player to gain momentum or at very least stage control safely. I love both of these. It doesn't give you the end point of a comeback where you just hit this one thing and you'll win. It gives you the beginning of a comeback. When either of these are triggered, you go back to a semi-neutral state and with solid core gameplay, you're able to claw back around. It's a momentum stopper rather than a win condition. We also as a genre need to look at how comeback mechanics are activated. If we're seeing them in every round and their impact on said round is huge like X Factor, we can change the parameters around its activation, giving the winning player the means to navigate that threat while still allowing for high consequence gameplay. Like it or not, comeback mechanics are here to stay in one form or another. People, especially spectators, love them. But I think it's safe to say that we all hope their impact on the game is somewhat more limited than is often the case at the moment. But like everyone has pointed out before me, their use as a balancing tool can be an important one. I just hope that developers can further explore their implementation to find new and creative ways to make them more interesting. No more tiny percent damage increases, please. It's just a bit dull.